To keep global warming under 2 degrees Celsius, we need to achieve a carbon neutral economy by 2050. My name's Ken Richards. I'm a professor at the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs at Indiana University. Each year, our global economy produces greenhouse gases equivalent to more than 50 billion tons of carbon dioxide. So how do we reach carbon neutrality in a cost-effective manner? An important part of the solution is carbon pricing. Today, the cost of greenhouse gas emissions are borne by society at large in the form of deteriorating environment and public health. By placing a price on carbon, we shift the burden to the emitters themselves, giving a, an economic incentive to consumers and businesses to find ways to lower their emissions. But which sources of emissions should be taxed? Should all citizens and businesses be taxed the same? And what should be done with the revenue? These are important questions because not all carbon taxes are designed the same. And carbon taxes can serve different goals, from emissions reductions to revenue raising, to stimulating a low carbon economy, to addressing local environmental and health issues. Carbon taxes have been around for decades, with the Scandinavian countries pioneering them in the early 1990s. In the wake of the Paris Agreement and an enhanced global commitment to addressing climate change, more and more developing countries and private businesses are calling for carbon pricing. But which factors matter the most in the design of carbon taxes? And how can countries create political support for their initiatives? The World Bank Partnership for Market Readiness has developed a guide that sets out how to design and run a carbon tax for your jurisdiction. Countries around the world have turned emissions into opportunities for the economy, the environment, and society. Will you be a part of it?